Donald Trump says today's Supreme Court ruling is a, quote, big win for the United States. And we expect to hear from the former president soon. We will bring you those remarks from his Mar-a-Lago home when they happen. In a unanimous ruling, the court said Trump can remain on the ballot for the Republican presidential primary in Colorado. The court struck down an attempt to keep him from running for allegedly taking part in an insurrection. CNN legal analyst Norman Eisen uh, joins us now. Uh, Norman, in her opinion, Justice Amy Coney Barrett underscored the unanimity of the decision in, and I quote her here, this politically charged uh, issue in the volatile season of a presidential election case. How significant will it be to the American people that this was a unanimous decision? Uh, it will be significant that the decision was unanimous in two regards. First, because it establishes that the road to disqualification of uh, insurrectionist candidates for president or other federal offices runs through the United States Congress. Uh, that's something that I and others had pointed to in advance as one of the most likely off-ramps here. So uh, in that regard, very important. But there's a second extremely important unanimous aspect of this opinion that's not being noticed, Becky. They did not explicitly deny the lower court findings that Donald Trump was an insurrectionist. Multiple fact finders have reached mm. that conclusion. Indeed, if you look at the evidence, the January 6th committee Colorado, Maine, Illinois have all found that, and that was not expressly overturned. And indeed, the three Democratic justices pointed to it in their concurrence. So in a sense, they have left the question open for the criminal authorities and for the American people, what to do about Donald Trump's allegedly criminal conduct. Let me just get our viewers very briefly uh, what the Colorado Secretary of State uh, said, uh, issuing a statement saying that she is disappointed. <clears throat> she went on to say, Colorado should be able to bar oath-breaking insurrectionists from our ballot. Your point is well taken, sir. It's, uh, it's good to have you. Uh, and, it, and an important day. Step back. Ultimately, at this point, for our international viewers who may not be as, you know, well imbued in the minutiae of what is going on at present, ultimately, on the issue of eligibility, Donald Trump has now been cleared to run for president, if indeed that is what the Republican voters want from him, correct? That's correct. And it's clear that he's going to be successful by all odds. He's accumulated already a daunting delegate lead. Super Tuesday will, uh, according to all the polls, deliver more delegates. One of the curious aspects of this decision is that they waited until the day before Super Tuesday to drop it. It puts the wind in Donald Trump's sails. He's already said it's a win. Uh, we'll hear a lot more from him. Why do that in the uh, 24 hours before Super Tuesday, in the media cycle around Super Tuesday? I right. would not have done that. Feels too political. You could argue that there was a responsibility by the court to do that. Otherwise, those who may have voted for him Tuesday would be disenfranchised if indeed the ruling had not come in his favor, surely. Isn't there an argument there? there that is an argument for having uh, released this decision last week or the week before. The timing of the mm. Supreme Court is now almost as important here in the United States as the substance of the decisions. And of course, the place where this will really count, if they, Becky, Mm. If they really believe that, okay. they'll move fast on the immunity case because 
Americans also want to know, did Donald Trump commit alleged crimes? And can we get that case to trial? Just as can the Supreme Court can move quickly here, will they move quickly there? Another very important right. question. But I would have done this last week. Let's continue the conversation and welcome in our panel, Molly Ball, a senior political correspondent at The Wall Street Journal, CNN political analyst Sungmin Kim. She's also a White House reporter for the Associated Press and former federal prosecutor Michael Zeldin. Welcome to you on. Welcome to you all. Michael, let me start with you. Is this the right opinion? I mean, was this a surprise? I mean, w what's your takeaway here? Well, it wasn't a surprise after we heard oral argument. And I also think it was a right decision from a historical standpoint, which was this uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment was specifically designed to prevent insurrectionists, Confederate officers who had fled the Union to fight against uh, it in the Civil War, from regaining their offices. And so the notion that these insurrectionist states can then put these legislators back in the federal Congress made no sense. And so I think that historical analysis is correct. Mm. Now, one you know, sort of nitty nitpicky issue on this is, should they have just stopped at that point and said, Colorado, you cannot do this, end of case? Or as they did say, which was Section 5 of the 14th Amendment is the only mechanism by which Section 3 can be enforced, and now we need federal legislation under Section 5 to do that. I'm not sure they needed to go there, but it's really less important. It's more sort of in the weeds legally. And right now, what we have is a 9 nothing decision that says Trump can appear on the ballot and let the voters decide. Because what they had one thing, Rahal, which Rahel, is this, which is this case is important in and of itself, but it becomes more important when read in tandem with the immunity case. If in the immunity case, the decision is that Trump is not immune, then you get this one, two of, yes, he can appear on the ballot, but he has to be held accountable in a court of law first. If they say he is immune from prosecution and he can appear on the ballot, that makes it a much more political looking outcome. And I'll turn it over to Molly and come to, to tell me if I'm wrong or right on that mm. politics. Yeah, and last I remember, oral arguments for the presidential immunity case are set for April. So we'll, we'll learn more about that um, in the weeks and months to come. Molly, let me ask, I mean, how much of a political win is this for the former president? Because um, this does not only apply to Colorado. It, it's pretty clear in the ruling that this applies um, to any state that would try to use this amendment in this way. Well, I think, as Michael said, this is broadly what we were expecting from the court after uh, the way that uh, the, the skepticism that the justices expressed during arguments. And also as a political matter, there was a feeling that the court did not want to be put in this decision, that at a time when so many have so many concerns about the strength of our democracy, that it would appear anti-democratic to take the leading uh, candidate for the Republican presidential nomination and have a, uh, and have a court say that he could not appear on the ballot. So from the beginning, I think most observers expected that the court was going to try to find some way uh, to take itself out of this whole matter and to not be put in the position of making that decision just because of the potential consequences and, and for how it would look to have the court intervening in such a weighty matter. I think also based on what we've seen from Trump in the past, the way he's reacted to things like the Mueller report, we can expect him to uh, mischaracterize this decision and claim that it exonerates him in some way. Of course, it does not. The justices rather pointedly did not weigh in on the conduct in question. Uh, but what we have seen in the past is that Trump tends to take any kind of decision like this and claim that it vindicates him. And I'm sure that he'll do that with this as well. Well, and Sungmin, speak to me about, I mean, there there is a group, certainly, uh, of Americans who will hear this ruling and think, here you go again. I mean, you have the Supreme Court, which uh, certainly a group of Americans believe has become more partisan over the years. So uh, talk to me about sort of the politics of that, that there is certainly a group that will hear this ruling and think, you know, I mean, here's, here's the Supreme Court again ruling in a way that seems to lean conservative. 
Right, but then it's also important to remember that this was a unanimous decision and that the, 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 this, this small issue that the court ruled on is that it is not up to states to decide whether this 14th Amendment applies to whether you can kick someone off a ballot. That really is up to Congress, and that, again, was a unanimous decision. And I think it's important to remember, too, that while Molly talked about how obviously, and clearly this is a win for Trump, he can stay on all of the ballots across the country. This is something, if you talk to Democrats, if you talk to Biden campaign officials, Biden allies, and many any Democrats, if not most Democrats, they actually did not want the outcome of Trump getting kicked off the ballot. They feel like this is they want to win on the merits. They want to win on the contrast of what Biden would do in a second term and what Trump would do in a second term. You try to ask Biden official about this, Biden officials about this for the last couple of months. They did not want to talk about it. President Biden did weigh in on it once. He said, you know, I believe he engaged in an insurrection, but he said this is up to the courts and he really didn't engage on it further. So you do see that you know, if you t a broad base of the Democratic Party as opposing as opposing of Trump as they are, this is probably the outcome that they wanted for all the reasons that Molly said um, mm. that this this is a you know a democracy issue that it, and it's hard to kick the leading Republican contender off the ballot in key states.